And okay, hello everyone. My, my name is Chen Wang. I'm an assistant professor at the University at Buffalo. I'm also leading the spatial AI and robotics lab. So today my topic will be Impactive Slam and Typo Library for Robot Learning. So uh, before I start, I, I, I would like to revisit uh, the main method of existing Slam algorithms. So Slam is normally can be divided to two parts, the front end and the back end. So normally the front end is to interpret central data and generate initial pose and math. It, uh, sorry, uh, I hear you are, are you talking to me? Okay, uh, so then for the back end, it is to generally uh, globally refine the initial estimation to improve the overall accuracy. Uh, and they, and normally this is a one-way connection. So um, um, right, right, right now, um, more, most of the researchers have found that the front end, uh, they, they can use uh, engineering features or deep learning based method. And right now we find that the deep learning method has outperformed the, uh, the, tra the traditional geometric method. But for the backend, we find that it is still optimization based or we call it interpretive op op optimization. So many people believe that the future of SLAM should combine the deep learning method with geometry based method. But the question is how? How can we com combine them? So before I answer this question, uh, let's first list several properties of deep learning based method and classic geometry based method. So first of all, the deep learning, deep learning method has very strong feature extraction uh, ability, and it is somehow robust. For example, it is robust to illumination and dynamic objects, but it is very data and label intensive. Um, most, most of the existing algorithms are supervised learning, which means that they require a large number of labels. But for geometry-based method, it is, uh, it is very accurate, especially when correct and simple model are given. But it's somehow not very robust, especially for outliers or illumination. But the good thing is that geometry based methods, uh, in, including formal adjustment or post graph optimization, they are all optimization algorithms. But deep learning is also a kind of optimization. The thing is that geometry based method, such optimization, does not require any labels. For example, when we, uh, when we optimize a uh, a factor graph with we, we don't need any labels. We just use a human defined loss function to estimate to optimize the pose. So this means that so in in the one hand, deep, deep, deep learning is supervised my method. It is also optimization. It is very label intensive. But geometry mm -hmm. method is unsupervised. So our idea is that can we just take backend optimization? as a supervision signal for the front end. In this case, the front end is a neural network, but the back end is unsupervised. So that, that means uh, if we can do this, that means we will have a self-supervised data-driven SLAM system. And this will also help us to retain the strong feature extraction ability from the deep learning networks, and as well as the accuracy from the back end. So the idea, uh, the idea is, is like, like this, so we designed the imperative SLAM uh, framework. Like, that is, we not only have the one-way connection, we also send feedback from the backend to the front end. That means we back propagate the post graph errors to the front end, so that we hope that it can, uh, the front end can learn geometry knowledge from the backend, and we, it will also result in mutual balance correction and accuracy improvement. And this will also result in self supervised training without any ground truth label. So to do this, we formulate SLAM, the entire SLAM system as a bi-level optimization. So specifically for the low level, a uh, bi-level optimization means we have two, uh, two objective functions. One objective function is subject to another objective function. So in this case, the lower level objective function is just the backend, uh, more specific, more specifically, it is post graph optimization. So it's trying to impose geometric consistency through interpretive optimization. And the high, the high level of objective function is just uh, we attach the front end to the back end and it, it's precise the sensor data di directly. And then we design the geometry based loss 
Uh, here we call it you. So our goal is to back pocket error from the human designed onfic errors through the uh, through the back end to the front end. And we hope this can improve the performance of the front end. Okay, so ne next thing is how can we solve this problem? Because they say this, this is a file level organization, the, the solution will be very complicated. So uh, many existing solutions are, are, are doing this. So to backflow the fiber block is the errors of you to the front end, we need the chain rule. So when, once we write, we write down the e equation, we will find that we will need to calculate a very complicated interpretive solution for the optimization. This is because when we backflow the errors, because the backend is the interpretive optimization. So we have to back up to properly the errors through multiple iterations, then finally to the front end. So this is very time consuming. But so what we did is that we if, if we we assume that the backend can always convert, which means that uh, either it is local minimum or global minimum, the gradient is always zero, which means that this this atom will be zero. And this will result in the one step back propagation. So in other words, we are using the stationary points of the bilevel optimization to bypass the very complicated interpretive uh, optimization for the uh, for the back of, for the back of propagation. So uh, so uh, so uh, uh, until now we have introduced a basic structure. Uh, we have a deep learning based front end and traditional geometry based back end, but we didn't specify any structure. Actually, actually they can be any existing networks or any existing back end. So here we just use a very simple demo. We design a serial visual inertial adoption. Uh, because of time, I, I will not introduce more details about the entire network structure, but I hope you already get our basic idea. So, uh, so because of the, this uh, mutual correction, we can simply uh, uh, perform multiple runs for the uh, for the forward and the backward. Then the performance of the front front end estimation can be keep in, in, can be keep improved. Okay. And next, you 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 may you may also ask that that how can we implement such complicated slam system because all of them are are going to be differentiable and they should work with deep learning based method. So actually our answer is the PyPost library. So next I will play a short video to introduce the PyPost library. Oh, sorry. It seems that there's no sound. Okay. Um. Maybe I can reshare my screen and try to play this. Okay. Okay. Okay, I will just replay this. Sorry about that. Introducing PyPost, a library for robot learning with physics-based optimization. PyPost targets for robotics, which mainly consists of three tasks, control, planning, and slam. Basically, control is to stabilize robot posts, planning is to generate future robot posts, and slam is to estimate current or past robot posts. To highlight this uniqueness in robotics, we call ourselves PyPost. PyPost provides various differentiable algorithms and modules for robotics and to end training. We also have second order optimizers, which are faster and stabler. Compared to PyTorch first order optimizer, our Levenberg Marquardt second order optimizer converges in fewer steps with lower loss. You can also use differentiable filters like EKF, UKF, and a particle filter in just a line of code. So where can I get it? Simply go pip install PyPulse. 
Is it everything I need? We are open source and open for contribution. Add features if you want to. You are welcome to join our community. By integrating differentiable trajectory optimization modules provided by Pipos, we are able to train an end-to-end -end local path planning network to predict the traversable space and generate physically feasible paths for dog robots. Also, by using differentiable graph optimization and differentiable IMU integrator in Pipos, we trained an uncertainty-aware IMU calibration model, which can reduce the odometry drift dramatically. These can be done with our optimized algebra and Lie group sensors, which enables easier end-to-end -end training on many robotic tasks. As for SLAM, our models support LiDAR input as well as camera input. With all of these features together at hand, I believe your unique robot journey with Pipos will be surely easy and pleasant. Okay. Um, Introducing oh, okay. Pipos. Right. Sorry. Okay. So next, you you may ask. So I assume that you all you already know what what is Pipos library. But next question you may ask, why do we really need a new library for SLAM? So here to answer this question, here I list several milestone SLAM systems uh, in two timelines. So for the above timeline, it is mainly for traditional geometry based method. For the lower timeline, it is for mainly for learning based method. So a uh, shift A is a feature matching, and then we have pioneering, pioneering SLAM system, including more model SLAM or PDM. Then in 2000, uh, uh, 2013, we have OpSlam, then long winds and super dormitory in 2021. So uh, I, I just list several of them. So, um, and many of you know that the theory behind SLAM didn't develop so much since the pioneering, pioneering work of monoslam. But OpSlam might be the most, until now, might be the most widely used SLAM system. So what has happened between them? Why there is seven years gap between them? So uh, after a short investigation, we found that one of the reasons may be that OpSlam is based on G2, which is a C++ based graph organization library. And then LOM is based on PCL and OpenCV. And PCL was developed in 2011. And then for WINS, uh, it, it is based on theory. Was was twenty fifteen, and then super geometry is based on GT sample, which was released at twenty sixteen, and then we, we can go to see the learning based my my method. You can see that uh, in tw in twenty eleven we have super and super geometry. They are quite similar to the traditional based my method. We 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 call them feature method, so it is quite similar to shape, and then we have pixel lock. We call we call them handcrafted organization because if you read their codes, either model slam or the learning based method or pixel lock or joy 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 based slam, if you read their codes, you will find that their organization are handcrafted. So this makes them very difficult to be extended for other scenarios. So the engineering or the robotics are very difficult to use them. But but this is still but they are still pioneering pioneering work work. So. To really push the uh, frontier of SLAM, I, we, we believe that we need a learning-based li li library for SLAM. So that, that's why we developed PyPost. And we hope that maybe in three or five years later, we can have PyPost-based SLAM system. And we also hope that they can be much more widely used. OK, and the next, I, I just list several, uh, several widely used CFSS-based optimization libraries. And we can find every widely used method depends on a, a great open source li li library. So next is we have choose Python. And I believe many of you will have infinity concern. Why do we choose Python? So to answer this question, I will revisit the history of programming languages for robotics. So about 76 years ago, we have assembly. Then about 50 years ago, we had C, then C++, Python, and Python 3 in 15 years ago. But actually, for, uh, for in the 1969, we, the human has able to be landed on the moon with Apollo 11. And those robotics applications was written in assembly. 
Then in 1991, we have Linux, which was written in C. The minus 19 icon was uh, written in C++. And ROS developed in 20, uh, 2009, which was written in C++ and Python. And uh, until the year of 2011, we have deep learning. And the year of 2016, we have PyTorch. And then in the year of 2021st, we have mass rover, which we have we, we know that PyTorch has been able to run on mass rover. And now the year is 2023. So what will so what will happen? So by seeing this timeline, we, we can see that robotists um tend to use more flexible programming languages over years. And you can see nearly all learning methods are Python based, or most basically they are PyTorch based. So recall that C has a much slower efficiency than assembly, but we still prefer C about 20 years ago because it, it provides more advanced functionality than assembly. So similarly, so we will keep using the same device tools for robots as 10 years ago in the next 10, 10 years. So if we will have something more advanced tools or libraries, what is this? And our answer to this question in the field of robotics is typo. So an, another reason that why do we choose Python is that actually typo is not only targeting them, it is targeting the entire field of robotics. So and ne nearly all perception algorithms mo models are currently in PyTorch. So com compared to control planning, they are more computational expensive. However, the efficiency reduction of classic algorithm may be negligible. If not, if not negligible, we should leverage on the full PyTorch ecosystem for fast deployment. For example, we can leverage PyTorch Mobile or Tensor RT to do model acceleration. So we believe or we expect that the future of robots will follow the advanced ML development pipeline. So first we have ideas, we then we do fast prototyping. Then we iterate the data in, in until we get a good model, then we train it in large scale. We, after that, we do a model acceleration and then deployment. But right, right, but right, 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 right now, most engineering are trying to use C++, the debugging C++, they are quite time consuming. We hope that uh, the robots can follow the timeline of CV or ML community. For example, they, they, they can update their, their models in every two months. Update the state of the model in, in two months, but in robotics and until now it is in, impossible. So we hope we, we can develop typos to really accelerate this research in robotics. Okay, next, next is about the users of typos. Actually, um, typos has attracts increasing number of users. So in this figure, the the, hor the horizontal timeline, uh, the, the horizontal axis is the timeline. The virtual access is the number of downloads by users running page install typos. So you, you can see that uh, typos has attracted uh, the in, a very stably increasing number of users. So compared to our competitor, the CSIS, which is also a uh, Python based organization li li library and is developed by my, Meta Research, you can see that we have totally outperformed CSIS, at least in terms of number of users. Okay, next I, I want to acknowledge all of, all of our more than 20, uh, more, more, more than 80 volunteer developers from more than 20 institutes and four continents. And actually, Typos library is very big. We still need more developers. So if you are interested in, please join us. And I also want to thank my PhD students, including Taimon and Shao, who they developed the impactful plan. Okay, that's all my talk.